Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai Shri Jagannath Rath Yatra Maha Mahotsav Ki Jai So we welcome you to the joyous celebration of Sri Jagannath Rath Yatra. Uh, sometimes in India, where I served for about 30 years, people would use the expression, uh, leave the world. They would say, uh, Swamiji, we cannot leave the world like you. And, I mean, they would say that to Śrīla Prabhupāda, to us. And Śrīla Prabhupāda would reply, What do you mean by leave the world? I'm also in the world. I'm breathing, I'm eating, I'm sleeping, I'm walking, I'm talking, I'm doing everything that you're doing. Uh, there's no question of leaving the world. I mean, we all will have to leave the world eventually. But right now, we're all in the world. The difference is of consciousness. During today's parade, uh, everyone was so happy. Our temple president here, Nityananda Prabhu, commented to me how happy everyone is. He was happy that they were happy. This is a quality of uh, Vaishnav. It is said, para uh, dukkha dukhi, that a Vaishnav feels sorrow in the sorrow of others. And conversely, he feels happy in the happiness of others. So everyone was happy. And why were they happy? They were happy because they were serving Lord Jagannath and his devotees and getting his mercy. It's very simple. Singing, dancing, uh, but not material singing and dancing, spiritual singing and dancing. And what is spiritual and what is material? The same thing can be material or spiritual, depending on the consciousness. Something that is done for the pleasure of the Lord is spiritual. And something that is done in a selfish mood of gratification without the Lord is material. Now every one of us wants to be happy. By nature, each one of us as spiritual souls is joyful. Ananda Maya Vyasat. Uh, the absolute truth, the origin of us is joyful. And therefore we 
also by nature are joyful. But our original joyful nature is covered. Uh, the, the spiritual soul, uh, which is by nature joyful, becomes covered by the material body and mind and senses and becomes miserable. But because by nature we're joyful, we're always seeking pleasure. But unfortunately, in the material concept of life, we do not know where to find pleasure. And we look in so many material things, uh, but without success. Um, recently, a god brother of mine told of a man who married seven times. He was looking for happiness. So he got married. He didn't find it in the first marriage, so he married again. He didn't find it in the second marriage, so he married again. Didn't find it in the third marriage, married again. Didn't find it there, married again. His sixth marriage, he got together with his third wife for a second time, but still didn't find happiness. And then in the end, he married a seventh time. We don't know uh, if there's any further developments, but <laughs> as of the last report, he had married seven times including the third wife a second time. Now, a materialist will think that there's something wrong with my partner, so I have to get another partner. But a transcendentalist who has knowledge from superior sources, from Vedic literature, will understand that there is a defect in, in the very process of coming into the material world, forgetting God, and trying to enjoy independent of God. In other words, trying to imitate God by being the enjoyer. Um, so, we learn from the Bhagavad Gita and other Vedic literature. Mame Vamsu Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. That we, the living entities, are part and parcel of Krishna. Hare Krishna. She's an example of a happy soul. We are, we are spirit souls, part and parcel of Krishna, who is the supreme soul. And our happiness, we are by nature happy, our happiness is realized in relationship with Krishna. And that is the process of yoga. The word yoga means to connect or to link. Uh, the English word yoke 
like to yoke oxen. The English word yoke comes from the Sanskrit word yoga. So yoga means to link or be connected or be reunited with Krishna. The individual soul is reunited with the Supreme Soul. And in that union, he realizes his eternal, joyful nature. And we all had a taste of that uh, in today's festival. We all had a taste of the bliss that comes when the individual soul engages in the service of the Supreme Soul. Uh, the activities are the same. Singing, dancing, talking, eating. But the consciousness is different uh, because the activities are performed in relation to God. So we can experience this happy life every day, at every moment, if we are in the consciousness that we are the servants of God. Jive Swarapai Krishna Nityadas. Our natural position, our constitutional position is we are eternal servants of Krishna or God. And when we're in our natural position, we're happy. And when we're in the unnatural position of trying to enjoy without God, we as spirit souls who are superior energy trying to enjoy matter, which is inferior energy, uh, it's an incompatible situation. We can't be happy. In, material, in the material consciousness, we're like fish out of water. A fish can be happy only in water. Water is the natural element for a fish. If we take the fish out of water and put it in a beautiful golden bowl filled with gems and jewels, that fish will not be happy because the fish is a creature of the water. It can be happy only in water. So we are uh, of the spirit. We can be happy only in the spiritual realm of Krishna consciousness. We cannot be happy in uh, the material realm of trying to enjoy matter. Even if we're surrounded by gold and emeralds and rubies and diamonds. Um, sometimes they say, I might be getting this wrong because it's been a long time, but I think they say a diamond is a woman's best friend. Now that Well, they also say, this is not aimed at women, please don't uh, take it like that. They also say, dog is a man's best friend, so the, 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 I'm not trying to say anything about women. I'm making the point that we have a mistaken concept of what our best friend is. Uh, if we, 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 we want a friend, we want love, everyone wants love, but we cannot find that in a diamond or in a dog or in anything material. That was the idea. We can find it in Krishna. 
Krishna is Suridam Sarvadehinam. He is the best friend of every living entity. We all want a good friend who will be there for us in our time of need. We want a good friend who will be there with us in our times of happiness, with whom we can share our happiness and with whom we can share our sorrow. But in the material world, with conditioned souls, we cannot find that satisfaction in any relationship without Krishna, without God in the center. God is really our best friend. Uh, he knows us most intimately and he can actually help us. Um, I once uh, had an experience chanting by the beach in Santa Barbara. Uh, you may know that there are two processes of chanting. One is uh, singing loudly with musical instruments and the other is uh, chanting quietly. Uh, devotees uh, who are a little more serious, they chant on beads. That is called japa. So japa is a very important process for developing our relationship with Krishna, developing our love for Krishna. And although it is simple, just chanting Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, it is a type of meditation and or a, a type of yoga and in yoga the central point of practice is to control the mind the bhagavad gita which is the basic textbook of yoga says that whenever the mind wanders one should bring it back to the self so when we chant, either japa or kirtan, our mind may wander. And when it does, we have to bring it back to the sound of the holy name of Krishna. And the holy name of Krishna is Krishna. Uh, Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha. Material sound is different. In the material world, the name of a thing and the thing are different. For example, if I'm thirsty and I chant water, 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 simply chanting water, water will not quench my thirst because the word water and the substance water are different. But in the spiritual world, or the absolute realm, the name of the thing and the thing are the same. So when I chant Krishna, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna is personally present, dancing on my tongue. So we want to associate with Krishna, and when we chant the holy name of Krishna, we associate with him. But to really associate with him means we have to hear the sound of the mantra. And when we hear the sound of the mantra, 
we associate with Krishna. And because Krishna is all pure, by associating with Krishna, we become purified. Because Krishna is full of bliss, by associating with Krishna, we become blissful. Um, so one day, I was chanting Japa on the beach uh, in Santa Barbara, which is where I'm based. And somehow, I was thinking of the people around me, how much they were suffering, and I was feeling their suffering. But I was chanting, intently chanting and hearing. And then it went beyond the people close to me, to the people on the beach. There weren't many, uh, but there were a few surfers uh, trying to catch some waves. And it struck me that they're, they're also suffering. Everyone in the material world is suffering. Everyone in the material world is in anxiety because they are spirit souls, they're in material bodies. As spirit souls, by nature, they're eternal. And these material bodies, by nature, are temporary. It's an incompatible situation. We want to live permanently. We want permanent happiness, but we're in, in an impermanent situation. Then, I saw some dolphins. And usually you go to the beach, you see the dolphins swimming. They look very pretty and cute. But I was feeling they're in anxiety. They're in anxiety. They're in the hard struggle for existence. They're in anxiety. Where are they going to get food? And there were uh, pelicans. The pelicans fly very high, and then they just dive down straight, zoom, into the water. And again, ordinarily you think, oh, look at the pelicans. But I was thinking, actually, the pelicans are in anxiety. They're looking for food. They're flying high, but they're looking for food. And when they see that they might get some food, they swoop down, dive down. And I'm sure it must be quite a traumatic experience every time they dive down because they have to crash through the water. They're looking for some fish to eat, and they don't know if they'll get it or not. And then they have to go up again, high in the sky, look for food, then again dive down, crash into the water. There were so many sandpipers, same thing, so many creatures, uh, seagulls. And I was just feeling the, the weight of the suffering of all these creatures. And it was really getting to be too much. I was really thinking, you know, if, if I keep taking on all this suffering, you know, I, I, I'm not going to manage. You know, it, it, this, this is too much. I can't take it all. And I was sitting chanting and hearing. And then a little ladybug landed on my wrist. 
And again, I don't know from my childhood, I think we thought ladybugs were good luck or something. Anyway, they were sort of, they're sort of pretty and cute. And I think, oh, that ladybug is suffering. That ladybug is in anxiety. That ladybug is trying to survive. And I think, I, I can't take this anymore. Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai So I was really thinking, you know, I I can't take this anymore. I'm going to have a breakdown. And then I suddenly had an insight uh, by the mercy of Krishna, by the mercy of the Holy Name, that Krishna cares for all of these living entities more than I do. I may want to help someone, but I may not really be able to understand what their problem is. And even if I understand what their problem is, I may not have the capacity to help them. But Krishna, he loves every living entity, so much so, that he accompanies the living entities in every birth, whatever birth they take, in whatever species of life, Krishna, as the super soul, Paramatma, accompanies them. Because the soul is eternal, and when it leaves the body, it takes birth again in another body. This is transmigration of the soul. But the, the super soul, or the, the supreme soul, accompanies the individual soul wherever it goes, in whatever species of life. Either human, dolphin, pelican, ladybug, the, the super soul accompanies us, Krishna accompanies us. So he loves us and he cares for us and he knows everything about us. He knows us inside and out. Uh, once Srila Prabhupada said that only Krishna knows how nice you are and only Krishna knows the volume of your suffering. So that is Krishna. And not only does he care for us, but he has the power to actually help us. I may know someone who's suffering medically, but I may not be able to cure them. I might give them some advice or refer them to someone but there's no guarantee that the person will be cured. In fact, there's a verse in Srimad Bhagavatam that says that um, one who is not cared for and protected by the Lord uh, cannot do anything for his betterment. Although he may accept remedies that may be temporarily beneficial, but ultimately uh, they may be, uh, they, they will be unsuccessful unless one is cared for and protected by the Lord. And the Bhagavatam gives three examples that a patient may have a good doctor and medicine, but if he's not cared for and protected by the Lord, 
he will die. There's so many examples. Very rich people, the best doctors, best medicine, and still they die. Or a child may be protected by both parents, but if the child is not cared for and protected by the Supreme Lord, the child can die. Similarly, one may have a good boat and still one may drown. One famous example is the Titanic. The Titanic was a great luxury liner. It was advertised as a boat that could not sink. And so many very wealthy and aristocratic people bought uh, tickets for its maiden voyage. And along the way, it struck an iceberg, which opened up a hole in the hull of the ship, and the ship sank. And most of the passengers, very wealthy people, aristocratic people, went down with the ship. So the only guaranteed protection is that of the Lord. And therefore, he can be a real friend. And at that moment, on the beach in Santa Barbara, I had the insight that Krishna is really the best friend. Uh, I am not the best friend. And if I, if I try to pose myself as the best friend or act as the best friend, in a sense, I'm trying to take the place of Krishna because Krishna is actually the best friend. Uh, all I have to do is tell people that Krishna is your best friend. And that's what Srila Prabhupada always used to say. It's such a simple truth. That the, the, the real friend is he or she who tells you that Krishna is your best friend. And suddenly that whole huge burden of suffering of others that had fallen on me or that I had taken upon myself was lifted. It suddenly became so easy. I just tell people that Krishna is their best friend. Krishna loves them. Krishna is with them in their heart. The individual soul and the super soul both reside within the heart. Uh, the Upanishads give the example of two birds on the same branch of a tree. One of the birds is the individual soul, Jivatma. And the individual soul is pecking at the fruits of the tree. And some are bitter and some are sweet. And thus he's enjoying and suffering. And the super soul, or Krishna, is simply witnessing the activities of the uh, individual soul. Waiting for the individual soul to turn to him. The super soul does not interfere with the minute independence of the living entity. He stays with him by his side and witnesses his activities, but he doesn't interfere with his minute independence. But he's waiting uh, 
for his friend to turn to him. And when the individual soul does turn to the Supreme Soul, then the Supreme Soul, Krishna, helps him in every respect to revive his relationship with him. And in particular, the, 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 the Supreme Soul will guide the individual soul to come to the association of devotees and in the association of devotees to learn the process of yoga, bhakti yoga, by which one can revive one's eternal loving relationship with Krishna. And the most important practice in that process is the chanting of the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. There are actually five most potent practices, uh, Sadhu Sangha associating with more advanced devotees, Nama Kirtana, chanting the holy name, Bhagavad Shravana, hearing Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, which is what you're doing now, in essence. Uh, Mathura Vasa, living in a holy place or a temple, or making your home into a temple. And uh, Murti Shradanvita Sevana, to serve the deity with faith and devotion. Uh, so these are f the five most potent items in devotional service, bhakti yoga. They are practices that the devotees here perform. They're practices that you can learn and execute at home. There's nothing that we do here at the temple that you cannot do at home. But the advantage of the temple is at the temple, there are other devotees, more advanced devotees, with whom you can associate, and everything may be done on a more elaborate scale. But in principle, you can engage in the same practices at home and get the same result. Um, but it's good to get away from the home environment sometimes because so many things go on at home that might distract us. Telephone, computer, at the least, if not television, videos, newspapers, magazines, Xbox, I'm not quite sure what Xbox is, but I've heard the term and I get it, I get the feeling it's in that category. So there are many distractions. So it's good to get out of the house and come to the temple and just focus on our relationship with Krishna, on our relationship with the deity, with the holy name with the scriptures and with the more advanced devotees. And then with that inspiration, we can uh, try to improve our practices at home. Or we might decide to move closer to the temple so we can come to the temple every day, which is ideal. And we might even come to the stage where we move into the temple. That would be uh, uh, practical only for a few, but it's possible. So, this is spiritual life. 
We basically do the same things that everyone else does, but we do them for Krishna. Krishna is, is the main goal. And when Krishna is the goal, and when everything is done actually for Krishna, we feel happy. Krishna is happy, and because we are part and parcel of Krishna, when Krishna is happy, then automatically we become happy. And that's what we all experienced today. We might not have been conscious of why we felt happy, uh, but in essence, we were acting for the pleasure of the Lord, knowingly or unknowingly. The Lord was, in fact, pleased. He is pleased when devotees or people chant and dance chant Hare Krishna and dance, and so we also felt happy. So uh, we want everyone to be happy, part of Sukha Sukhi. We want to be happy, we want everyone to be happy. And it is possible by making this small adjustment that instead of trying to make ourselves the center, we keep Krishna in the center. Instead of us being, thinking we can be the supreme enjoyer, we accept Krishna as the supreme enjoyer and act to please him. And when he is pleased, then automatically we are pleased. So it's very simple. Um, but it does take some uh, determination. As Srila Prabhupada said, the process of chanting is simple, but the determination to keep up the practice is not so simple. But that comes from association. Everything uh, comes from association. I might mention that in June, well, I'll be coming back in June. On June 11th will be the uh, Vyas Puja celebration or the, the appearance anniversary of His Divine Grace, Tamal Krishna Goswami, who was the uh, spiritual leader of the community here for many years, and under whose guidance and by whose blessings the community is uh, continuing and uh, advancing even today. And yeah, so that will be uh, June 11th, Thursday. And then the following Wednesday, June 18th, will be a Japa retreat in Montgomery, Texas, which I have heard is about three hours by car from Dallas and one hour from Houston. So that will be level one retreat from Wednesday, June 18th to Sunday, June 22nd. Uh, it, it, would, it ends around it begins Wednesday evening, so you could, you know, you could work on Wednesday, and then be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Then it ends around noon on Sunday. You can be back Sunday night, uh, and.
and then those who are <laughs> able and willing, there is level two that has an extra day that begins Tuesday, June 24th, and ends Sunday, June 28th. So I'm mentioning it because it can be a very uh, transformative experience. Uh, it really can be. Uh, anyway, I won't say more now, but um, we did have a, a Japa weekend here in October, and some of the devotees here, some of the friends here attended, and they had a wonderful experience. Um, we had one in Ojai, California. Uh, Mother Rasa Gya, Srila Prabhupada's disciple from, well, now in Austin, she attended, and she can tell you how beneficial it was. Uh, so it's the same practice, it's just going more deeply into it in a more focused way with uh, a very supportive association away from the usual affairs of the world. So it's something uh, to consider. But otherwise, simply enough, you can come to the temple here every day, or at least once a week, uh, as often as possible, and chant and dance, and hear philosophy, and take prasad. Once, uh, one, Srila Prabhupada had coined that phrase to describe the process, chanting, dancing, feasting, and philosophy. So once one of Srila Prabhupada's disciples was giving a talk, a short talk in Prabhupada's presence, and he said that our process is simply chanting, dancing, feasting, and philosophy, and a little work. And Srila Prabhupada interrupted him and said, no, no work. So the disciple began again. He said, Krishna consciousness is just chanting, dancing, feasting, and philosophy, and a little, little work. And Prabhupada interrupted, no, no work. <laughs> it is only service. It is only service and it is bliss. Hare Krishna. So, do any of you have any questions or comments? It, it looked like our Master of Ceremonies, Dwarka Prabhu, was about to come forward to move us along. Oh, he was going to get a microphone in case there were any questions or comments. Well, that's okay, if there are. Oh. That's like us. If we get disconnected from the power source, we're useless. We have to keep connected. And if we get disconnected, we have to get reconnected. That's Bhakti Yoga. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I have one question during your discourse. Yes. Um, 
you mentioned that we want to promote Krishna as our only friend. He's our only real friend. Does that mean we have no other friends? Or that we can have no other friends? We should, shouldn't trust anyone but Krishna? Or we can have friends in Krishna's service and we may meet friends along the way? Or how do you mean that? Please tell us. Yes, very good question. Uh, yes, Krishna is our best friend. Uh, and someone who directs us to our best friend, Krishna, is also our friend. Someone who helps us to develop our relationship with Krishna is our true friend. Uh, Srila Prabhupada told a story from his childhood. Uh, uh, there, was, uh, there were um, two children in a family who lived across the street from him. And one of the children had typhoid and w was on a strict fast, but they were just children. So the one with typhoid was hungry. And so his other brother, little boy, fed him some uh, pakoras, which are uh, deep fried fritters. And when the mother found out, she was so angry because those pakoras could have killed that boy in his condition, and she, she severely chastised uh, the, the son who had given the pakoras to the other brother. Now that child gave his brother pakoras. His brother was hungry, and he just wanted to help him by giving him pakoras because he was hungry. But he didn't have knowledge of what was really good for him. And although he meant good, he actually could have killed him. So we want friends who know what's really good for us. People may be well-meaning, but if they're ignorant about what is really good for us, in their intention, to help us, they may actually be harming us. So, and, and sometimes it's, it's said it's better to have a wise enemy than a foolish friend. The foolish friend can kill you. So, yes, uh, we, Yes, Krishna is the supreme friend, but we also have other friends in Krishna consciousness who help us in our relationship with our supreme friend, in our service to our supreme friend. Thank you for that question. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Shakuntala, Dasi. Maharaj, besides, besides chanting with Hare Krishna, what other methods are there for uh, making one, changing from one being the center to oneself being the center to making Krishna the center? Very good question. Other than chanting Hare Krishna, what other methods can we adopt to place Krishna rightly in the center instead of ourselves trying to be in the center? Well, chanting is the main, Cheto Darpano Marjanam. It cleanses the dirty things from the heart. And what are those dirty things? First is identifying with the body, 
thinking I am this body, and then everything in relation to this body is mine, the concept of I and mine, as that becomes purified, we come to the point of, you know, I am Krishna's, and Krishna is mine. That consciousness can also be developed by the, the same process of sadhu sangha associating with advanced devotees, Bhagavad Shravana, hearing or reading or studying the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, other scriptures, um, worshiping the deity. Uh, we come to understand that Krishna is the proprietor. The deity is the proprietor, and we do everything for the deity's pleasure. We don't just eat, but we offer the food to the deity, and we take the remnants as prasad. All of those things will purify us and place us uh, in our proper positions as Krishna's servants and visiting the temple, or spending time in holy places like Mayapur, Vrindavan, Jagannath Puri, Radha Kala Chanji Dham. They all serve that purpose. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Krishna Swami Maharaj Ki. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, so announce what it is, and I will. Uh, our next uh, couple of programs. We still have two more programs at least. Uh, the next program is. Uh, by our Gurukul kids. It's a Mridanga presentation. Maharaj was uh, talking about how happiness is there and how to serve in, you know, for Krishna. You will see our Gurukul kids in that mode in this Mridanga presentation. And after that, we have another uh, drama, uh, drama on Sakshi Gopal, again by our Gurukul kids. And uh, please be here to enjoy the performance of all this. And uh, you'll see how to, in real life, to connect with Krishna, the way Maharaj was explaining to us. Thank you. Hare Krishna. I had a god brother named Guru Das Prabhu. He's in San Francisco now. He liked to play the cartels. It's the same principle as the Madanga. So he, he asked Srila Prabhupada, he was just a new devotee, he said, Srila Prabhupada, I, li I like to play the cartels in the kirtan is that sense gratification. And Srila Prabhupada replied, there are two kinds of sense gratification, material and spiritual. So that is spiritual sense gratification because it is for Krishna's pleasure. So now we will watch the young men enjoy some spiritual sense gratification. Hare Krishna.